Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto awakens Atsutsuki bloodline, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. Uzumaki Naruto, the third Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi, lays hooked into various machines following a vicious beating on his 11th birthday. While he lay there with three Ambu guards, appointed by the third Hokage, in the room. Abito, in his guise, as Tobi shows up. After easily dismantling the guards, he pulls the nine tail out of the seal on Naruto's stomach by way of the eight trigram sealing style release and the judicious use of Kamui. As a final up yours the strongest of the nine Bijuu releases all the blocks on Naruto's na, forcing his body into evolving and in some cases devolving to support all the potential stored in his blood. It is this change along with his passive Uzumaki bloodline that keeps him alive. As the Hokage rushes in with his Anbu, Abito, removing his mask, taunts them telling them that he was the one who released Kurama on that night, and now he has taken what he left behind. Believing Naruto is dying or already dead he leaves the distraught Hokage. Inu, seeing movement on the chest of the dead Naruto, tells the Hokage. And doctors what they can, ultimately informing them of the changes happening in the Jinchuriki's body. Akashi, not understanding what those changes could mean for Naruto asks Lord Third, what could be hidden in his blood, apart from what we already know about his mother's family. We know his father came from a civilian family, they said his body is unlocking all the potential in his blood Kakashi. We know the lineage of his mother and that the Uzumaki have always had strong life forces and vitality, but not everyone knows about the beginning of the clan. You may or may not know Kakashi, that the Uzumaki and the Senju are cousin clans the third says. Seeing Kakashi's shocked face he says, like I said, it's not a secret, but it's not well known. What is a secret, and a very well-kept one among these clans, is that they have one more close related clan they are cousins with, along with a distant relation to the Kagaya and the Hayuga. Being a Hokage, I am privileged to be in possession of ancient scrolls belonging to the Senju, some from the Uzumaki which were brought here from the Yuzu ruins by Jiraiya. Both texts mention that they descend from a brother who took the Senju name, and a sister who chose the Uzumaki. The fact that they had another brother will rock the foundations of this village, why do you say that sir? A shocked Kakashi asks. Because my boy, the other brother, was known as Indra, the progenitor of the Achiha clan. The elderly village leader replied, and that's not even the most shocking detail Kakashi. Kakashi, unable to speak from the shock his mind is feeling, stumbled back, hoping for a chair to hopefully appear to keep him from fainting, to what seems to be the ultimate secret. The most shocking detail is that all three clans descend directly from the root of ninjutsu, or ninshu, as he called it, the Rikidu Senen. Hearing a hard thump, the god of shinobi turns around, only to find Kakashi slumped against the wall. Evidently, the news of tonight proved to be too much for the copy ninja to handle. And he fainted. Naruto was in a dark place. He's been stuck in here since his latest beatdown, courtesy of the honorable villagers of the leaf. At first he thought he was dumped here by them, until he heard a harsh malevolent voice urging him to release it. Whatever that meant. Then it was urging him to run towards it. As if I would fall for that again. He thought. Then came the most excruciating pain he's ever felt. For someone who prides himself on his pain tolerance, again, courtesy of the loving leaf villagers, he was overwhelmed with the feeling of his life being sucked out. This is it he thought Naruto Uzumaki, prospective god Im Hokage of the leaf village, dies without achieving his dreams, well at least I get to finally meet my family. He thought. Death was setting in, he could feel the sensation of numbness in the tips of his fingers spreading. His heartbeat was slowing down drastically, from the thumping at the realization of his situation to now. His heart, sluggishly pumping, forcing him to fight, to live. All for naught, it would seem. Before he lost consciousness he saw an orange-colored specter in the shape of a fox, giving him the middle finger. Then, he knew no more. Grip, tiled, waken from your slumber, wa well, what? Waken from your slumber. The birds have already had their fill, and the world is passing from your sleepy grasp. Naruto jumped up, expecting to still be in the alleyway where he was beaten to a pulp. Instead he found a sower. A stinking sower. Is that where they dumped me? It's not enough that I am treated like trash, now I'm only fit to lay in their waist. Seize your wallowing boy. Your life won't change if you're a whining bitch. Brother, mind your tongue. He is still a child. Who's there? Naruto shouted, spinning around in the faintly lit sower. Came back to finish me off you bastards. Well I am guilty, as charged, kiddo, my brothers aren't bastards. An amused voice answered back from the shadows. And in my day, I'd have shoved my foot in your mouth, threw your ass for the insult. Naruto was struck silent, in his rage he couldn't even form a thought, except his need to rip off the head of the person who would make fun of him. You dare to mock me. Dadabasa, really you? That is enough, be quiet from now on, and listen well. A voice, different from the other three from before was heard. Naruto could see a shadow in the form of a person walking from the shadowy depths of the sower. First of all my boy, you weren't dumped in the sower. 
We are in your soul at the moment, what people stupidly refer to as the mindscape, we aren't even near the mind at the moment. It would need a powerful, bloodline-oriented to even. We get it, father, you're extremely intelligent, and we are honored to be in your presence. Yes, forgive me for that. My boy Naruto, your mental presence is here at the moment, but your physical body lies in the hospital of your village. Something has happened, besides the beating yo. Who the hell are you, old man? And if what you say is true, what are you doing in my soul? What? Child. How dare you speak to my father in such a way? You are my descendant all right. There's no doubt about it. Elder sister, you can't condone such impudent behavior. That's correcting big brother, the boy has a treasonous mouth. Treason, you say? How, he doesn't know who we are. Even if he carries my name, he doesn't know the history behind it. So in his mind, there's no treason. We are just people who are invading his soul. You're right my Narada. Naruto, forgive us for not introducing ourselves and explaining why we're here. Boys, introduce yourself to Naruto, please. I am Indra Atsutsuki, progenitor to the Achiha of the Sharingan. My name is Ashura Atsutsuki, the Senju clan of the forest are my descendants, yo. Narada Atsutsuki, ancestor of the Bichin Uzumaki clan. Stare in wonder at my awesomeness. And I am Hagoromo Atsutsuki, elder son to Kagaya Atsutsuki, the first chakra user. I am also known as the Sage of the Six Paths. Naruto stood as stiff as a statue. Only his chest movement due to breathing showed signs of life. His jaw became a feature of the sower floor at the first person's introduction, eyes bulging at the second's finger pointed shakily at the third's. Once the fourth introduced himself his mind shut down. His body though jaw on the floor, eyes bulging comically, and pointed hands still shaking, have yet to follow. So I well, I believe we're done here. Killing someone like this, it's tough on my stomach. So I am off to offer the sacrifice to the great Raman god Narada said, walking towards Naruto. Did someone just say something about my lord and savior? Naruto said immediately coming out of shock, but work Narada. Though how you knew that would wake Naruto from his shock, we'd never know though Hagoromo. Do you also worship the creator of the universe who gave us Raman? Narada asked her descendant, Naruto in wonder. Never mind. Hagoromo, Indra and Ashura all thought, sweat dripping at the idiocy in front of them. Hami created the universe sister. Yes, yes, I know Indra. He used Raman as basis, don't you know? Even I know about that. Science people call it the noodle theory. Yep. No it is not called such a stupid thing, it's called string theory. Pretty sure it's noodle theory Indra. It describes how these string-like noodles propagate the holy broth called space and interact with each other. Narada answers, glasses appearing on the bridge of his nose, making him appear as a cultured and educated theorist. Indra shouts, well this is amusing, Narada, we don't have time to waste. Even our chakra, pooled together, cannot exist in this plane indefinitely. Father is right. Ashura said, taking a deep breath before continuing. Uzumaki Naruto, as is my right, as your ancestor through Senju Aina, I send you Ashura gift you the knowledge of our clan. Please use it responsibly. Loathe, as I am to do this, it seems I have no choice Indra says breathing in, he speaks. Uzumaki Naruto, as a distant relative I have the choice to bestow on you the knowledge of my descendants, as well as my own. I have decided to do this because it is because I faltered that the world is in this state. Therefore I Atsutsuki Indra gift you the knowledge of my clan. Please, don't mess things up. My turn then. Narada says, swaggering over to Naruto. Well then, let's start Uzumaki Naruto, as is my right, as your ancestor through Uzumaki Kashina, I Uzumaki Narada gift you the knowledge of our clan. Bowing a bit to make eye contact with Naruto, she says go wild kiddo. Indra starts before being interrupted. Uzumaki Naruto, as is my right, as your ancestor through the Uzumaki and Senju clans. I gift you my knowledge of Senjutsu. Although, like your ancestors before you, you will not get my ocular bloodline even with a gift bestowed by Indra, you will get some of my chakra. Use it to bring peace to the nations. True peace. But that last piece said, all the pain that was being blocked by the four ancient beings flooded Naruto's system. Finally knocking him into unconsciousness. No sower, no ancestors only blissful darkness. It's been six months since our resident prankster has been through literal hell. A beating undeserved, his chakra network ripped to shreds through the forceful removal of a chakra entity bound to his chakra since birth. And finally, the unlocking of his ancestral gifts and four entities literally jamming knowledge into his subconscious. With all that happening, things were bound to change. The body can only handle that much shock. And with his Uzumaki chakra, boosted and guided by chakra for years, finally having the freedom to run loose, it was running rampant and showing exactly why Uzumakis were such boisterous people. Luckily, for Naruto, the introduction of Senju Chakra brought calm to the rampant storm. Not saying that it didn't add to the changes, because it did. When the Uzumaki boosted the chakra coils, the Senju brought control. When the vitality was strengthened, so was the body. Muscle density for strength had speed added. 
When Naruto's mind was altered, Senju Chakra added a balanced intellect. And so it went, changes upon changes, and in the end the Atsutsuki Chakra brought the needed balance. The third Hokage was at wit's end. The never-ending paperwork, the demands of the council, and the threat of the villagers had him almost pulling out his hair. People believed because the village is a military one that they had autonomy and that his word was law. How wrong they were. They were a village inside a nation. The Fire Nation, to be exact, is ruled by a daimyo. Well he might have control over the shinobi, the daimyo had the last say over his citizens. And that's where the rub lay. The villagers of Kanahagakur were out for blood. Eleven-year-old blood. And they were prepared to ask the highest authority in the Fire Nation for the right to shed said blood. And truthfully, there was nothing he could do about it. Naruto was a civilian, a powerful one, but still just a normal kid. And subject to the whim of the daimyo. He was walking into the Anbu hospital, finally getting to visit Naruto after two months of going through inane documents and the nonsense the civilian's merchants filed to get more power in the village. Although he wasn't visiting, as often as he would like, he was getting information on the status of the boy or what they could figure out. It hasn't been easy. Around midnight, after the removal of the Kaiubi, Naruto went into a state of shock. A bright glare of chakra shot from his and built a cocoon over his body. As the glare lessened, it darkened into a pitch black wall. Nobody could touch it, not without having your chakra nullified. In fact, they would not have been able to check in on Naruto without the wall allowing for it. As stupid as it sounds, after trying and not succeeding to break the shell, Kakashi wondered out loud how they would be able to keep Naruto healthy with the machines. The wall had the answer of growing holes to connect with the machines. He was about to open the door leading to Naruto's room when he felt murderous intent coming from the other side. Ripping open the door he was met with the sight of a cloaked person with a mask almost entirely white, bearing down on Naruto with a tanto poised to enter the cocoon and kill him. Running toward the cloaked assassin to stop him, he was too late as the sword seemingly cracked through the shell. As Hiruzen was about to kill the assassin for the murder of his surrogate grandson, the cracked parts of the shell formed a levitating ball. The chakra put into the sword to sharpen it fizzled out. The levitating ball then, after reading the intent of the assassin it would seem, lashed out at him turning him to dust. I can't believe it. That was like the dust release of the Nidame and Sandame Tsuchikage. He said, believe it. Said a voice from inside the cracked cocoon. Naruto? Is it you? Asked a Hokage. Yes, it's me Naruto replied. Hesitating at first, he reached inside to pull Naruto out. The cocoon further breaks up to form orbs, floating lazily by Naruto's side. The Sandame Hokage embraced Naruto with tears welling at the corners of his eyes. Oh my boy he chokes out in a sob I was so worried about you. Sorry for worrying you Jiji Naruto says I was being chased by bullies again and went too far from my building to get inside before the festival started. No my boy, you were not to blame, it's not your fault that you were beaten. The third replied. Jiji, something else happened, Naruto said, unsure if it was real or not. While I was out I heard a voice calling me towards it. I was unsure to follow such a menacing voice so I ignored it when the same voice shouted anxiously for me to remove the seal. Then I felt a ripping pain and saw a reddish fox with nine tails floating by and giving me the finger maybe he was hallucinating from the beating. Deciding to come somewhat clean, Hiruzen told Naruto the truth of what happened when he was born. So, you're telling me that it was a nine-tailed fox I saw. Not just a nine-tailed fox, but the Kaiubi. The fourth held a lottery and I was the lucky one to be chosen for his messed up plan. Naruto was understandably angry. Where were my parents in all this? Were they dead or just honored to give their kid as a sacrifice to the great fucking fourth? No my boy, there wasn't a lottery. You were the only one he could choose. The Kaiubi was ripped out of the previous. Besides you, she was the only one who could safely hold it Naruto the Sandame said. Why is that Hokage-sama? Naruto asked, flinching at the title Hiruzen said, only one from the Uzumaki clan have the special chakra to hold it my boy. The clan? I come from a clan. A fuming Naruto asked why am I only hearing about this now, Hokage-sama? Where are the rest of my clan? He shouted. You are all that's left my boy. Your mother died of having the biju ripped from her, just as one were when it was ripped from you the Hokage said. Why did Naruto ask, pain filling his voice at the news of how his mother died, unshed tears threatening to mar his face. Why all the subterfuge Jiji? Was I not worthy of the knowledge of my family? Built and sadness pooled at the Hokage's face, his features showing his age and weakness as he answered on the contrary dear child, you are worthy of everything, it is the villagers that weren't worthy of the knowledge of your heritage. Confusion filled Naruto what do you mean Jiji? Naruto, the reason I decided to tell you all this is because I can tell you changed a lot. Besides the physical growth, you grew mentally as well, you seem more mature. So with that in mind, can you truthfully say you would have kept all this to yourself if you didn't go through all this growth? He asked. Looking back, Naruto had to blush no sir, I would have run off and shouted for the whole village to hear. 
That was the reason for the word game Naruto. You see, the Uzumaki clan were a feared clan. Shinobi with monstrous chakra capacity compared with other ninja clans. Blessed with otherworldly skills in, and. And because of this, they were attacked by three great villages and wiped from this world. The only ones with Uzumaki blood left are you and Senjutsunade, even with her, it's so diluted that all she's inherited from your clan is her temper. I see, then bearing in mind my newfound maturity, can you tell me who my father was? Naruto asked, licking his lips in nervousness, the Hokage answers, your father, Naruto, was Namaka's Minato. The fourth Hokage, are you kidding me? That bastard is my father? Naruto growled out that it's not enough that I was sacrificed for this village, but to hear that your own father set you up for a torturous life. Tears were flowing freely from Harrison's eyes at seeing the anguished look in Naruto, would you be less upset knowing he used someone else's child, Naruto? Would that make you proud? Asked the Sandame Hokage. That brought a halt to the thoughts running through his mind. Can he acknowledge someone like that? Someone who would rip an unknown child from the arms of his parents just to sacrifice him to this life? Would the thought fill him with pride? The answer was simple. No Jiji, I'd be disgusted at the thought of being related to someone so cruel. Naruto finally admitted, when I think of your family, Naruto, I can't help but be filled with pride. They all died a warrior's death, something all shinobi want. Should we die, let it be by our terms, with no fear, no regrets. I'm actually jealous of them Hiruzen said, what do you mean Jiji? Why would you be jealous? Asked Naruto, my boy, I haven't been fearless for 11 years. Not since you were born. I have been in fear for your life every single day of your life. Should I die, what is to become of you? Will you be forced into being a mindless killing machine, as someone always wanted you to become, would you be broken and abused to become a shell of a person, or would the villagers finally have their fondest wish granted and have you die like an animal here is in confessed? Why would they be so cruel Jiji? Naruto lamented, people hate that which they don't understand dear boy. The Hokage admitted they have a deep-seated fear of the Kaiubi, not unwarranted, but, as you were only the prison to the beast, they'd have only succeeded in hastening their deaths, should your death occur, and the seal breaks. Even now, they are lobbying for your execution at the courts of the daimyo. To be honest with you, Naruto, I have no idea how we will get through this, should the daimyo decide you are a danger, a newly matured brain. Sculpted by his Uzumaki chakra to think of creative ninjutsu formulas, further enhanced by senju decisiveness, and balanced with the Atsutsuki calmness of thinking under pressure, finally came with an answer. We may not have to worry Jiji, a smirking Naruto said, they're lobbying for the death of one, Naruto Uzumaki, orphan Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi no Yoko, grinning when he caught on to what Naruto was thinking what they do not know is that you're not anymore. You're an innocent citizen, even more so, you're the clan heir. Their request will backfire for sure, especially if the daimyo learns that you are a true Uzumaki. For this to work, we'll need someone to prove that I'm no longer a, Naruto added, I have the right person in mind already, my boy. Rest up, while I sent for him. When I get back, we'll discuss those floating orbs behind your back. At surface level, Jiraiya was a simple man. All he needed in this world was booze, money, and women. That's all he ever stood for. Some can even say, the only reason he trained the fourth Hokage was so he could mooch off of the name he would eventually become. Taking credit for shaping Namaka's Minato into an SS-level ninja. There is something wrong with that statement. 1. Jurei of the Sanin isn't just a man, he is a shinobi. Someone so complex, it would take a long time to sort through the leaves to the roots to see the tree for what it truly is. Loyal, to the core. Unbending even in the harshest storms of the heart and mind. It takes a lot for a man to sacrifice everything for his home. The only reason he stood rooted to his word till now was for Naruto. His godson, someone who may just as well be seen as his grandson, since he practically made a man of Minato. Now it's time for the tree to pull out its roots and move on. His godson needed him. When he got the news of what transpired six months ago, he was about to desert, so great was his anger at Kanoha. Luckily, Enma, the chief of the monkey clan, summoned the Sandame Hokage and was able to give the whole message. Naruto was alive and well. And needed him more than ever, since the Kaiubi that could heal the worst of assassination attempts that got through his spy network was gone. Now, another attempt on his godson's life was in the works. This time, it was a political attempt, but they were ready. When he got inside the Anbu hospital he was amazed. He couldn't believe that Naruto, from the picture he got six months before, was this young man before him. Could someone change this much in six months? No longer short, it seems Naruto was set to be taller than his father, already at an impressive 1.72 meters and weighing an astounding 71 kilograms. It was safe to say, Naruto was going to take after the Uzumaki men. Not monstrously built men, but lithe muscle designed to support the power and speed it takes to swing around swords for hours. Yet they were tall. 
Uzumaki Garp, when the Senju and Ichiha signed for peace, was said to be as tall as Hashirama and Madara. An old man, nearing the end of his life. Crooked and bent by time, was as tall as young men in the peak of their lives. Naruto's growth spurt had made even more of Minato's looks come forth in Naruto. Only the shape of Kishina's eyes remained. The whiskers, which defined Naruto's looks, were completely gone. Making Naruto identical to Minato and those that knew him as a kid would know. Naruto, at first, was pissed off. Finding out he had godparents, living godparents. And one was finally going to show his face, but one look at Jiraiya was all it took to see what he meant to the man. When Jiraiya hugged Naruto, he broke down, his body shaking, as he cried out his frustration, finally after shedding the raw feeling, he began crying tears of joy at finally meeting his godson. Naruto felt a little piece of himself, finally at peace. Then the shocker. So, are you going to tell us what those orbs behind you are? Jiraiya asked Naruto. Naruto explained to them all that happened after his beating, from the Kaiubi being torn from his body to meeting his ancestors. Am kiddo, you don't do anything halfway, do you? Jiraiya asked, completely baffled. So, what are those things called, and which ancestor gave it to you? These are called truth-seeking balls. Malleable black chakra orbs which can alter their form and characteristics in various ways. They are made up of chakra of all natures even yin-yang release Naruto explained. Ever the intellectual, the professor asked if it's made up of all chakra natures, then why are they black? Or do they change colors depending on the chakra nature? No sir, although they are made up of chakra of all natures, these bad boys are basically a new time space. So they are literally small balls of space. Naruto admitted smugly. The older shinobi were shocked at this. Which ancestor gave you this much power Naruto Sirotobi gasped. A fully grinning Naruto answered the same one who gifted chakra to the world Jiji, the sage of the six paths Hagoromo Atsutsuki. The sage of the six paths gave you this? A stupefied Jiraiya asked. Yep, he did a smug Naruto responded. Did, you're seriously overpowered now, Jiraiya told him, and together with the knowledge to use these powers, you'll be unstoppable. Eventually Naruto confirmed, but that won't happen for many years. Why is that? Naruto Jiraiya wondered. I believe it's because he needs experience, am I right Naruto? The professor asked. Yes Jiji. Having the knowledge of A and actually doing the are two different things. There are jutsu in my subconscious that would drain even my chakra core boosted by Kaiubi chakra if done without the needed control, Naruto explained the Atsutsuki and Senju heritage may have given me instinctual control of my chakra, but that means nothing if I can't control the power I need in A. It will take us two days to travel to the capital. Can you get your control up to do the normal you have by the time we reach the daimyo's castle? Sirotobi asked. Yes, by then I can do the Uzumaki by heart. Well, the ones meant for Chunin level shinobi at least. Gureya, always one for torturing sessions, also known to the weak-minded as training, asked Naruto, have you heard of shadow clones, kiddo? Naruto's eyes glaze for a second, searching his subconscious for the answer. Yes, the Nidames. Brilliant. With this, I may reach Jonin level control by then. Then let's go. The capital awaits. Naruto left 50 shadow clones, with orders to go into the Anbu training fields to get the needed control to be able to use the normal in his arsenal on the level of Uzumaki and Senju Jonin. They had a meeting to interrupt. The three ninja made it to the fire daimyo's castle that night, having run like madmen, when it seemed Naruto had the endurance to keep up with the older men. The next day the citizens of the land of fire would bring complaints to the court. Normally the issues of Konoha would be dealt with immediately, and the merchants of Konoha were counting on this fact. They forgot an important aspect, the daimyo is an important figure, and he would only meet immediately with other important figures. Mainly, other daimyo are his hokage. And when he was told that a delegation from Kanahagakur was outside his castle gates, asking for a meeting, Sirotobi wasn't part of the group. He sent word that he will meet them post-haste as in, when it is time to meet the citizens. The self-important merchants did not like this at all. How could the daimyo treat them like second-class citizens? They were just as important as the Hokage in their minds. So, as he would meet with the cage when a meeting was called, so should he leap for them. Sadly, this was not the case. They were going to have to wait. And, as they were on a very important assignment, and, as the Hokage can mess up everything they've worked for, up till now. They were very desperate. Thank you for meeting us so soon, Daimyo-sama. I know you had many things you could have done, and I am grateful that you decided to do this. Saratobi started, it's fine. Truthfully, I had nothing to do for two days now. The only reason I had my people tell you I'm busy was because the merchants of your village look extremely funny when they are upset. An almost giggly daimyo said. We know, it's an enjoyable part time of all three of us the Hokage answered back. Speaking of your companions, here is an. I recognize Jiraiya, a little older than the last time I saw him though, but the other one I don't know. Though, the face is extremely recognizable. Are you perhaps a Senju or Namika's boy? 
the daimyo asked Naruto. Naruto stood up and gave a low now daimyo-sama, it is an honor to be in your presence. You are correct in your guess. I am both a senju and an amicus, although I am not known by those family names. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. Entirely amazed by the manner in which Naruto spoke to the daimyo, Sirotobi, and Jiraiya missed a slight narrowing of the daimyo's gaze. Uzumaki you say. What do you take me for, boy? The daimyo spat do you send you think you can waltz in and take the yuzu seat simply because you are related to them? Not even Tsunade has the right to it, what makes you think you do? Shocked at the tension created, Naruto stuttered out, Daimyo-sama, forgive me for not introducing myself fully. I am Naruto, son of Namaka's Minato, as you guessed, but I carry my mother's family name. I am the son of Uzumaki Kishina, sir. She was the granddaughter of the Yuzu Daimyo. Is this true Hiruzen? If so, why was I not told about any of this? An extremely upset Daimyo asked, for the same reason I never told a soul that Naruto is the son of Minato. If people found out he was truly an Uzumaki, he would have suffered more assassination attempts than he already has. Would stop at nothing to attempt another kidnapping, as they had with Kishina, Misu, and Iwa would just do it to be spiteful. And Iwa would look into it deep enough to figure out his Namika's heritage. Sirotobi clarified, and they haven't already. How could someone not see it, the boy looks exactly like Minato. A stunned daimyo inquired, Sir, it's because six months ago, all the people saw was a demon, some were kinder, and only saw a, Naruto told the daimyo, so that's what you meant by more assassination attempts, the daimyo said what changed though? As I understand it, a dies when the biju is taken out. The Hokage explained what happened six months ago, keeping the changes in Naruto and his ancestors out of the explanation. Just as he finished explaining, the doors to the daimyo's private office were forcefully opened. It was the daimyo's son, with the merchants of Kanoha smugly following. Finally having an audience with the daimyo they thought they were one step closer to the total annihilation of the demon brat. As the daimyo's son was partially blocking their view, they couldn't see all the inhabitants of the room. Only one was visible, the target of their hatred, brought to them on a silver platter, as it would seem. There he is, my lord. That's the demon we were talking about. Even now he's trying to influence your father, as he has influenced our Hokage. One Gans Mwakam shrieked, what? Guard sees him immediately. Isan, the son of the daimyo shouted, on whose orders, son? Have you checked to see if I'm under anyone's control? No, you have not, and what you were about to do could have been a grave mistake. The daimyo said, stopping Isan. Father, these people are merchants from Kanoha. They were sent by the Hokage when he managed to get free from the influence of the Kaiubi Jinch Kriki. He asked them to tell you to come to Kanoha so they can finally execute the demon, is that so? Then why didn't their Hokage come here himself? A bemused daimyo asked, he's in the Anbu hospital, daimyo-sama. They won't open for anyone, and they are keeping him inside so he can fully heal. That's why we were sent, as his most trustworthy citizens Gansm replied, fully believing the daimyo would fall for it. All they needed was for him to execute the demon brat. Now openly amused the daimyo said wow, Hiruzen, you must have grown extremely powerful over time. For you to be so sick and in hospital and here at the same time. Yes Daimyo-sama, sometimes I surprise myself with a voice, sounding like their Hokage replied from around the corner. Now fully entering the room, Isan, the guards and pale-looking merchants, saw the glaring faces of the Sandame Hokage and the San. Seeing their plan had failed, Ganzm took out a kunai and threw it, not with great accuracy mind you, with the intention to kill Naruto, only for him to catch the badly thrown weapon before it killed the Daimyo in whose path it flew. Guards arrest him. Had it not been for the Uzumaki clan heir, I would have been dead. The daimyo shouted, Uzumaki heir, no daimyo-sama, you're mistaken. He was given that name. It's not his real name. Gansm shrieked, wrong, he is Uzumaki Naruto, son of Uzumaki Kishina, the granddaughter of the deceased Yuzukage. The daimyo said coolly former Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi no Yoko, no. I refuse to believe that. He is the demon himself. Gansm shouted, then the Shadame Hokage married a demon, and his children and grandchildren were demon spawn. The daimyo asked, what does this have to do about that demon brat being the Kaiubi? One of Gansm's companion asked, Mito Senju was the very first Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi, after her was Naruto's mother, the princess of the Uzumaki. So answer me, if Naruto is the Kaiubi just because it is sealed into him, actually, it was, it's not anymore, then Mito Senju and all their children and grandchildren are demons. Is that right? The daimyo asked, no daimyo-sama, that boy alone is the demon. There's no way he is a true Uzumaki, there is no mention of his parents' names, so he is the demon in human form. The other companies of Gansm said, there's one way to prove this. The Hokage said Daimyo-sama, besides sealing and Kinjutsu, what else was unique to the royal Uzumaki? Oh this will be a treat, a jovial Daimyo said to Uzumaki Naruto, seize those lying bastards. 
Adamantine ceiling chains, Naruto shouted after ordering the clone that practiced that technique to dispel, proving his heritage the merchants finally admitted defeat. They were going to ask for the execution of a clan heir. They were aware of what was in store for them. Now, take them away from the guards. Isen, stay, I want you to meet Uzumaki Naruto, great-grandson of my friend Uzumaki Kenshin, son of the Red Death, Uzumaki Kishina, and the Yellow Flash, Namikaze Minato. Now, hopefully you realize, we have to be sure of our actions. They may carry devastating consequences if your choices are bad ones. The daimyo told his son. Bound to Naruto, Isen said I have no excuses, Uzumaki-sama. Please forgive me for my naivety. Please, Isen-sama, there's nothing to forgive. You were misled. And please call me Naruto Naruto pleaded, then call me Isen, please. I am only a few years your senior, and our families are connected, Isen replied with a friendly smile. Very well Isen Naruto smiled back. Right then, you kids go out and enjoy yourself. Isen, show Naruto around. The daimyo said. Thank you father Isen said. Yes, thank you daimyo sama Naruto said. Now that we're alone, tell me everything I need to know about Hiruzen. And leave nothing out. The glaring daimyo told the Hokage. This is going to be a long explanation Siratobi, and Jiraiya thought with trepidation. Naruto and Isen were walking through the castle halls discussing the lives they've led until this day. Isen spoke of his sheltered childhood. And how he hated being treated like a glass figurine. He has finally won the chance to be trained by Chiriku, a former member of the Twelve Guardian Ninja. You know Naruto, I was finally able to convince my father to have me trained by one of the former Guardian Ninja that protected him. Then I go and mess everything up. If I knew I was being manipulated, I wouldn't have come barging in, as I did. Now, father will never let me be trained by Master Chiriku. Isen confided in Naruto. I wouldn't say that, Isen. Sure you allowed yourself to be steered like that, but everyone makes mistakes sooner or later. The fact that you admitted your mistakes must have shown your dad that you're growing, have faith. Naruto proclaimed. That's easy for you to say Naruto. I bet you've been trained at a young age. Just the way you hold yourself shows you have confidence in your skill. I will never get the chance to learn to defend myself. Isen let out in self-pity. You couldn't be more wrong, Isen, Naruto confessed what you've witnessed today was only the tip of the iceberg. I have led a life of abuse and hatred shown towards me. I have had assassination attempts after assassination attempts, all locally, done by misguided villagers and misled shinobi. In fact, the only reason I have this confidence in myself is because of an attempt on my life that awakened my bloodlines and allowed me to bloom. So trust me when I tell you Isen if you continue to believe in yourself and refuse to budge. Nothing will keep you from your dream. Believe it. Isen couldn't help but smile at this. This guy was special, he felt so low after he made that mistake in his father's office that he believed his dreams were shattered. Now, with only a few words from Naruto, he believed he would fulfill his dreams. There is no doubt that he would. And he met a friend today that would hold him accountable too. A good friend, a true one. Finally, the two friends were walking out of the castle into the garden in the castle grounds when they heard a terrible shrieking. You. What are you doing here? Leave here, move you filth. One of the merchant's wives shrieked, walking towards Ishin and Naruto in laborious steps. When she reached Ishin and Naruto she put her hand on Naruto's shoulder and pulled hard to throw him on the ground. Tired of always being attacked, he defended himself, swiping her feet from under her. When she fell, she screamed hard and loud. The ninja their group hired to protect them on their track to the capital, attacked Naruto with the intent to incapacitate him. Harshly if they had to. One ninja throws a kunai towards Naruto and Isen to split them apart and get them away from the client. Naruto, knowing Isen didn't know how to defend himself from kunai, directed one TSB, truth seeking ball, to intercept the kunai, turning them into dust. Then turned another TSB into, throwing them with harsh speeds towards all three shinobi. Thu got hit and felt the draining effects of the TSB, effectively halting their attack. The last shinobi, thinking that the demon brat poisoned his team members, changing his mission from incapacitating to maim, did hand seals and called out. High release. Great fireball technique. Naruto did some seals and called out. Water style waterwell. Naruto was panicking. This was the first shinobi fight where he defended himself with ninjutsu. And with this in here, he couldn't allow himself to lose. Luckily help came from the castle guards. The Kanohe ninja was about to attack Naruto with Kenjutsu when he found himself restrained. Fighting for release he turned around to see who the accomplice of the demon brat was. He played when he saw himself face to face with one Asuma Siratobi, the son of the Hokage. How much worse could this day become? He thought to himself, what the hell is going on out here? He heard a voice shout. Looking over to the side the voice came from, he got his answer. Hey, dad, I think this belongs to you, Asuma cheekily called out he was attacking the son of the daimyo, luckily Naruto was here to protect him until we came, why did I have to ask myself that question? The Kanoha shinobi lamented, what do you have to say for yourself, Kanohanin? 
Saratobi growled at the pale shinobi. Okage-sama, we weren't attacking the son of the daimyo. We were protecting our client because the Diyuzumaki san attacked her. The shinobi told the Hokage, we honestly didn't know the boy was the son of the daimyo sir. Is it true Naruto, did you attack that lady? Saratobi asked Naruto. No sir, I was only defending myself when this lady attacked me for no reason, Naruto told the Hokage. You lying filth. How dare you say I was attacking you? I was getting you away from this castle, who knows what you were planning to do here. The merchant's wife screamed, enough. You are the filth here. Attacking Uzumaki-sama like you did, disregarding that you were on royal grounds. If it wasn't for Uzumaki-sama here, your guards would have killed us. Isen told her. Watch how you speak to us, boy. Do you know who we are? The merchant wife's companion yelled. Three lowlifes who aren't even worth my spit. Isen growled I am Oda Isen, son of the fire daimyo, and the one you stupidly called filth is Uzumaki Naruto, grandson of the deceased whirlpool daimyo. That thing isn't a true Uzumaki Oda-sama. Yelled one of the dunce ladies. This thing, as you call him as a nobleman, connected to our family through friendship and marriage by our ancestors, and now once again the friendship shared between us. Well said, my boy. If I didn't see the humility you showed inside my office after you made that error, what I saw now shows me you finally started to grow up. A very proud daimyo praised Isen. Blushing from the surprise compliment Isen replied bowing thank you for the praise father. No thanks needed son. Well, what are you waiting for? Order the guards to take away the filth. The daimyo said with a grin. But daimyo-sama, we're not the filth, that boy is. Dunce lady number one begged. No, no, you are the filth. This is truly the clan heir of the Yuzu prefecture through his mother, Kishina, whose father was the daimyo. Even though their nation doesn't exist anymore, he's the prince and all the riches belonging to them that my family have held is his. So how can I call him filth? The daimyo asked. A dejected group, the dunce ladies and shinobi were when they couldn't answer back. They knew they were in big trouble. Even more so, the three shinobi since they didn't receive the mission from the mission room. They only saw money and the chance to kill the demon brat. They believed all would be forgiven when they returned and their superiors found out why they left without permission. Now, they would be lucky to receive a suspension without pay. Especially since the heir of the daimyo was in danger because of them. Guards take them away, please. I have had enough of them. Isen ordered. Naruto walked up to Asuma after the guards took their prisoners away and hugged him. Hey kiddo. Long time no see. Asuma said ruffling Naruto's hair man you've grown huge. What have they been putting in your ramen? He joked. It's just my superior genes at work uncle Naruto joked back. I have a feeling you have some tall tales to tell me, dad, especially since we've already had complaints of a super pervert peeking at the baths. Meaning you've called Jiraiya back. Asuma said to his father. You'd be right. On both counts Aritobi replied dryly, taking a kunai and dispelling Jiraiya's sheepish shadow clone with a thrust to the nuts. Naruto and Isen snickered when they heard anguished shouting coming from where the communal baths were located. The memories from Jiraiya's clone causing him to keep and thereby giving away his perverted actions. Seems the women of the capital hit just as hard as those in Konoha. Please. Not the face. Not the face. He screamed no. The face. Please. The face. Have mercy please. After the group returned inside the castle with a bruised Jiraiya joining them, Naruto told Asuma and Isen what happened to him to cause the changes, keeping the family secrets to himself. Asuma, though, already knew about his parents yet was shocked to find out where Naruto got his senju blood from. Did you know about this dad? He asked his father. Of course I did, Asuma. How do you think Minato got the plans for his they were blood sealed? Even though she was a senju, not even Tsunade could break that seal. Sensei knew he had a daughter. So those scrolls were meant for his descendants. Saratobi told them. Yeah, grandfather even fooled everyone with his cold exterior. He created those shadow clones to fool people. Well he spent every bit of time he had with his daughter growing up Naruto added, when she could understand why all the secrecy, he would take her out to park so he could play with her. But the Henge Silan of course Naruto's eyes glazed over for a second, after which he added, I don't think my pranking came entirely from my Uzumaki side, Jiji. Amazed by the ingenuity of Taburama Senju he asked, why do you say that Naruto? Naruto's face took on smirk that was entirely too much like his sensei's for comfort. My great-grandfather was working on a seal that would create shadow clones of shadow clones at a fraction of the chakra it normally took. Just create a shadow clone, slap the seal on, and that clone can create as many as the power inside them could make. Problem was, they weren't usable since a clone doesn't have its own subconscious and needed the original to create orders. Seeing that it would only work on creating clones of non-sentient things, he decided to put the seal in the Hokage's official stamp. So every time you stamped an official document, adding chakra to verify it, you've been damning yourself into doing double the work. 
My father apparently saw through the illusion on his first day as Hokage and put the counter seal on his wrist, cancelling the clones. A snickering Naruto finished explaining, with comical tears streaming down his face, shivering bottom lip, Hiruzen Saratobi fell to his knees with his hands balled in fists and screamed you bastard, sensei. Hiraya and the others couldn't keep it in anymore and laughed at the plight of the Sandame Hokage. The name, things weren't going as well as one would have thought it would. When Abito got back to the Akatsuki headquarters, he tried to get the Kaiubi chakra into the husk of the Juubi, a primordial beast that the Kaiubi once formed part of. Problem was that since the Kaiubi chakra was divided and the yin aspect was inside the belly of the Shinigami, the only thing that kept it on the mortal plane was the seal on Naruto. Since the seal was made with the assistance of the Shinigami herself. Once Abito pulled the Yang chakra out of the dimension he stored it in, it faded until nothing was left. When Abito found out, he lashed out in his fury, releasing so much chakra that the Juubi husk started to consume it. Since his chakra was inside Abito through the white Zetsu parts that were embedded in him, not to mention the chakra he inherited from the one who initially stole from the god tree. Fortunately, Abito got free of the husk's draw. Unfortunately, he set the precedent for the chakra of the Son Goku, Kakam and Isobu to break out as well and dissipate. Zetsu, on discovering what happened, lost himself in rage, ripping out nearly all of the Zetsu clone parts inside Abito. When he came to, he realized what he had done. Because of what Abito did, they were set back three years before they could capture those Biju again. Now, because of his own fury, Abito had to wait for new Zetsu components, since the husk's energy was almost exhausted from the forceful release of the Biju energy it amassed. Abito would also need physical therapy to get back to the level he was with these implants. All because the child got impatient Zetsu thought the threesome consisting of one academy student, a Sanin, and Hokage, elected to get back to Konoha that very day. After the excitement of Naruto's first shinobi brawl at the defense of not only himself, but Isen, the son of the daimyo, as well, they were hoping to get home soon. Naruto had to get more familiar with using it in battles, and with the knowledge of how Tabarama Senju got around, the Hokage will finally have a better time as the Hokage. All I need to do is have Naruto break the blood seal on Sensei's scrolls, and the secret to vanquishing the paperwork nightmare will be mine. Saratobi thought, running on autopilot since he was deep in thought. He was unaware of the distance being put between himself and his companions, since the dark chuckles he let slip were creeping him out. Man, Jiji has really lost it. Seems the closer we get to Konoha, the more senile he gets his Naruto thought. Sensei Jiraiya thought creeped out we need to get you out of the office more, maybe my new book will cheer you up. Clearing his throat, Saratobi said to Naruto when we get back to the village, we should totally get some scrolls out, so you can break the blood seals and train in what we find in it. Perhaps starting with Tabarama Sensei's scrolls. Totally. Naruto thought, his face said in disbelief he's probably after grandfather's clone seal. Digi, you do remember that I have all my grandfather's knowledge locked up in my subconscious, right? All I have to do is search for the needed information, and I'll have it in a jiffy he was interrupted when the Hokage started shaking him, a demented glint in his eyes. I need it, my boy. I've got to have it, my precious Hiruzen snarled, hissing like a viper. Did you just call me your precious Jiji? Naruto asked, his face now set in deadpan. Not you, my boy Saratobi replied calmly, his features returned normal your grandfather's seal his face returning to a snarl. Okay, Naruto said, rolling his eyes detour. He asked Jiraiya. Definitely Jiraiya replied, let's see Tenzaku guy if we're lucky we'll find Tsunade and dupe her into becoming the fifth Hokage. Sounds like a plan, Naruto said, making a clone to put the clone seal on the Hokage. You ha 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 ha. Finally, I am free. Saratobi shouted, yeah, and maybe get her to look into Sensei's mental health, as well, Jiraiya said with a giggle, and Zakugai, where all your dreams will come true, yeah, that doesn't sound like an extortion scheme at all Naruto thought, well Sensei, here we are. Tenzaku Gai, home of gambling dens, and some of the best brothels a guy could ask for Jiraiya announced grandly, we're here on business Jiraiya, and on a deadline. That stone clone I left will be out of chakra by the morning. Let's just find Tsunade and leave. Hiruzen said, it won't be that easy. She's bound to be in a casino, and where there's money to be won and booze to be drunk, she'll probably have her claws out, Jiraiya said. If we have to, we'll just kidnap her like that last San in mission where she refused to leave Los Nuevo, Hiruzen added, the casino capital. She still drools when it's mentioned. Too bad she lost so much money in that place, then threatened to wreck it, Jiraiya shook his head at the memory. Yes. I won. Sweet Rel come to mama. That would be her? Naruto asked, a sweat drop forming. Yes, she didn't inherit much from the Uzumaki. Some ceiling skill, but the temper and exuberance came in abundance, the third Hokage said with a wry grin, Shizun. Tonight we dine like queens. But first, we have to find out who's after me. And pay them back for this large windfall Tsunade said, a dark grin forming, Sayoke Tsunade-sama. 
Just, don't wreck this place, please. We don't want any trouble from the daimyo again, Shizun said with a cold feeling coming over her. Yeah, a whimpering Tsunade said, I still can't believe that old man can be that scary, no wonder he and Uncle Kenji got along so well. Anyone who could match an Uzumaki like that is a terrifying guy. Anyway, let's go get our loot. Tsunade said, her exuberant feeling back at the thought of the money she won. Not so fast lady. A voice called from behind them. Turning around, they saw it was the loan shark that they owed money to. Didn't think about slipping away without paying me back, I hope. He said he'll just take my cut, then leave you old girls to your business. Taking an extra thousand in casino chips he slapped Tsunade's butt and turned around to leave. Not knowing what kind of hurt he is about to be put in. The fuming Tsunade was about to hit the lone shark so hard, he'd spontaneously combust when a hand stopped her fist just in time. If she was annoyed before, she was pissed now, but stopped when she turned to see who was strong enough to catch her fist. Sensei. She said. Okage-sama. Shizun said. Oink Tonton grunted. Shit, the lone shark said. Looking at the lone shark, Hiruzen said, as compensation for saving your life, I will take the money you lent one of my shinobi. And for touching one of my subordinates inappropriately, I would be taking all the money you have on you. And your apology to her. Yes, sir. Take what you want, and thank you for saving me. The lone shark said, turning to Tsunade bowed low, please accept my apology for touching you so inappropriately ma'am then he left in a brisk walk before sprinting away, as he turned a corner. Not that I'm not happy to see your sensei, but whatever you're selling, I'm not buying, Tsunade said after staring at the Hokage for a while. Well, we will see Tsunade. You do remember that I am the Hokage right? Trained by your grandfather and granduncle. The Hokage asked, nevertheless, I will not go down quietly. Tsunade growled, and neither Jurei or you would leave without debilitating injuries. As you can see, we're not alone, or has all the alcohol messed with your sight? Jurei asked her. Scoffing she answered back who, the guy who's glaring at me? He doesn't look like much. To be honest, the way he's looking at me had me waiting for him to declare that his name's Inigo Montoya or something. Scowling, Naruto bit back. This is Senju Tsunade, Jiji. All I see is a childish hag, with a badly done Uzumaki seal. Adding with a sneer great Aunt Mito's blood must be boiling in those dry veins of yours. Who the fuck are you pipsqueak Tsunade snarled at Naruto. Who he is, depends on your choice Tsunade. Are you leaving willingly or do I have to spank you like the child you're acting like? I'd like to see you try, especially that nobody over there she growled back turning to Naruto. A mocking smirk on her face that changed when Naruto disappeared, reappearing in front of her, his knee lodged into her stomach. The force of the blow made her step back. Seeing a follow-up strike coming for her face she blocked it, spinning with the momentum she hit him with the back of her fist. The strike sent Naruto through the wall of the building, into the street. Jiraiya, about to stop her from going after Naruto was stopped by the Hokage. Leave him Jiraiya, he needs to let loose. And she needs to be reminded that looks can be deceiving. Hiruzen said if it gets out of hand I'll stop him. Naruto picked himself up from the paved street, then rolled away just in time to miss a descending leg. When Tsunade's strike hit the ground the paving cracked. He lunged at her, intending to strike quickly at her face. She blocked his punch and returned her own which was blocked as well. The two quickly started a tactical hand-to-hand -hand fight. With feet added only to trip the other up. Tsunade was finding herself in a fight with a blonde brat that shouldn't be possible. He was meeting her strike for strike. Even if she wasn't adding chakra to her blows, he should be hurting by now. Yet he met her, as if they've been sparring like this for ages. As if he knew her style. Betting a front kick in, separating them she asked. Hey Brad, who taught you my style? Your style? You're really full of yourself, this is the Senju knowledge of arms fighting style, created by Senju Bitsuma. Not Senju Tsunade a slightly puffing Naruto replied. I know that, but how do you know it? Did Jiraiya teach you? She growled at the remark. See, there you go again. Did you think you were the only Senju left on this planet? Naruto mocked. Tsunade has had enough of his smart ass remarks lunged back in the fight. If I have to beat it out of you, I will. But you are going to answer me brat she said. But Naruto ducked her wild swing, spinning underneath it until he was almost flush with the ground. Putting his hand on the ground for balance he kicked over his head, forcing Tsunade to block the blow to her head with her arms crossed. Seeing the ruse had worked, he pushed himself up spinning into her body, with his elbow striking over her heart. Tsunade reeled with a blow, slightly losing balance. After gaining the balance she coughed hard. The effects of the blow showing itself in her hand. Tsunade went pale at the sight of the blood and started shaking. Naruto, thinking that his blow hurt her more than it was meant to, went to see if she's alright, but felt a hand gripping his shoulder. Turning around he saw it was the Hokage who shook his head. That's enough Naruto. Go rest, she won't be able to fight anymore. Saratobi said. What's wrong with her Jiji? Naruto asked. She's afraid of the sight of blood my boy, he said something happened in her past that caused this. 
Go back inside the casino and give them this money for the repairs to the casino wall, then book a room for her to come out of shock. I guess we're not leaving until then. Alright Gigi, I will be back in a bit, Naruto said as he left. Hiruzen saw to it that Tsunade was put inside the room. He was going to get to the bottom of Tsunade's rebellious behavior, even if he had to wait her out for the answers. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.